Our lab actually has a pretty rich history of using sugar as a material to construct vascular network templates out of. And the way we've done that in the past was through a sort of conventional way of 3D printing where you extruded melted sugars into the structures you wanted. But what we found over time was that the types of structures that we were most interested in constructing and that are most realistic in mimicking native vascular networks, those simply couldn't be made using the 3D printing technologies we were using. And so in order to make these more complex and previously nearly impossible architectures, we've developed a fundamentally new way to 3D print sugars. And the way we're doing that is we're taking powdered sugar components and we're doing a process called selective laser sintering. So we're tracing patterns in these powdered sugars using a laser and locally melting these sugar particles together to form solid sugar structures. And then down the line, after 3D printing the sugars into these templates, we can actually build all sorts of combinations of cells and materials around those sugar structures. People in our field have become increasingly aware over the years that one of the biggest hurdles to actually making translationally relevant engineered tissues that could end up in the clinic one day is being able to make them large enough and densely packed with cells to mimic the function that we get in the body. And so one of the big constraints that's preventing us from getting there right now is delivering enough oxygen and nutrients to all those cells across that large volume of tissue. And the way that nature solves this problem is through very complex vascular networks. And so by developing the technologies and materials to sort of mimic and recapitulate these complex hierarchical networks of vessels, we're getting closer to the point that we can provide oxygen and nutrients to a sufficient number of cells to get that kind of therapeutic function.